Okay, we're going to be looking at the higher level details of DNA replication. Um, before we go on, though, we have to understand a few differences between two nucleic acids. You've heard of DNA before, but there's another form called RNA, and this is going to come up a lot later. But for now, just to understand the process here, there are three main differences, and if you compare DNA to RNA, you kind of see some of them already. Um, and these are the bases. You've learned about DNA before, so you know that A, T, C, and G exist. But uh, basically what we're looking at here is DNA is double-stranded. Uh, RNA is actually single-stranded. You can see that here. DNA uh, inside the actual nucleotide, the sugar in there is called deoxyribose sugar. The, so the ribose sugar is actually missing an oxygen atom. So it's called deoxyribose, whereas in RNA it's called ribose. The four bases in DNA are A, T, C, and G. The four bases in RNA are A, U, C, and G. So the T stands for thymine, the U stands for uracil. So this will make a lot more sense when we go and talk about how DNA actually codes for proteins. So how does DNA make you who you actually are? But we're going ahead with understanding DNA replication. And if you haven't watched the first video, you should definitely check that out first because a lot of this stuff is not going to make sense unless you understand what's going on over there. We'll come back to this animation. There's some great anima animations I pulled from the internet. Um, I think what we should do is maybe start by looking at this. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll break it down and uh, talk about each step uh, briefly. But I'm just going to narrate this a little bit. So DNA, in order to copy it, it gets unwound and there's an enzyme that's going to unwind it. And if you actually take a look at this unwound strand, and in the, in the last video I did talk about this 3' prime and 5' prime end and what, what that means. One of these strands here is just going to get copied like this, built down this way. And the other one is going to have to be built down this way because uh, this molecule can only be built, this strand can only be built in the 5' prime, the 3' prime direction. I'll explain one more time after we come back and look at this. So keep on going. This strand gets made continuously. This strand, however, has to be made backwards. So we've only unzipped to this point right here, and then we have a few extra steps on this side here. So you get an RNA primer, then you build the rest of this thing here. So this is DNA, but this is actually RNA. We're gonna see that in a second. And uh, this is called an Okazaki fragment. The scientists who discovered it, actually there were two scientists, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Okazaki, actually. And then as you see this unzip further, well, this one can just keep getting built this way. This is really easy. In fact, it just gets built towards where everything is being unzipped. This side, though, you got to build backwards, uh, going this way in small sections, because you got to wait for it to unzip, then start from that point, wait for it to unzip, then start from that point. So this gets built in segments. So this side, leading strand, this side, lagging strand. This is kind of what slows everything down because it's built in segments here. Continuing on, to built in segments, we're left with these little gaps here. So first we gotta fix this, replace this with, ac with actual DNA, and then we gotta go in finally and then glue these little bits together to actually make two strands of DNA. What a pain, just because this side has to be built in this direction. If both sides could be built in the correct direction, then everything would be Fine, so let me go ahead and break it down, then we'll come back and see the whole thing as an animation one more time. Ignore all these things, These are this is my bank of things that I'm going to be grabbing in a second here, but um, here you have a DNA strand, double-stranded DNA, and one end. If this end is five prime, then the other end has to be three prime, the matching. We can't have five prime over here. Um, we have an enzyme that's gonna unzip, and from the first video, you see that there's an enzyme called helicase. Helicase unzips the helix. It's an enzyme that unzips the helix. So this is moving in this direction to the right. All right, and it's it's like a zipper. It's just going to keep going down this way, and then the DNA is going to open up. Uh, let's start with the easy side. DNA polymerase three is the molecule that's responsible for building the other side of this DNA strand. So on this side, well, if this is five, this new strand that's going to eventually be built over here is going to look like this, and that's going to be a five prime to match with this three prime next to it. These are called anti-parallel strands. So literally what happens is this guy, this DNA polymerase three, can only build a new strand in the five prime to three prime direction. And it makes sense since this is gonna be the new five prime end. It's gonna go like this. And as it goes down, it's gonna eventually build 
this uh, strand here. So by the time this is all moved down, da -da 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 then we built one side of this DNA already. Of course, the nucleotides will be in there. And see this as an animation. As this guy moves down this way, this is just going to continue, and this strand will be built continuously. Therefore, it's called the leading strand. That side is easy to understand. So the players so far, helicase unzips. DNA polymerase, the third. DNA polymerase, the third, is actually going to continue down and do that. That's easy. Now, the lagging strand presents us with a problem. Because notice what happens here. If this is the 5 prime end, then the new end over here will be the 3 prime end. But we've just mentioned how the, DNA's, the DNA polymerase 3 molecule can only build, starting from the 5 prime end, build a new strand that starts in the 5 prime end all the way to the 3 prime. If I do this going up this way, that's not going to work because this side is going to be the 3 prime end. So actually, this side needs to be built backwards because if that's a strand right there, well, the 5 prime end is going to be this side. So theoretically, that means this DNA polymerase 3 has to only build like this. A lot of questions probably come up at this point. This is stupid. Why doesn't DNA polymerase 3 just not be dumb and actually just learn how to work in both ways? It makes so much more sense. Unfortunately, that's not how bi biology works and that's not how evolution works. So a lot of these mechanisms are built up from previous mechanisms that exist. So carrying on, carrying on. So what actually has to happen here is this DNA polymerase 3, uh, well, one of them is going to be work. So let's say this guy's over here. And I'm going to make another copy of this guy. So this DNA polymerase 3 has to build this side in this direction, starting from the fork of where we've unzipped to right now, and then it has to build this way. And to make things even more complicated, uh, it's not just a continuous motion like this. So in order for this to go here, it's almost like DNA polymerase 3 can't figure this out on its own. So another molecule here called primase. Just because of this problem, we have three extra players. So follow along here. Primase says, okay, silly DNA polymerase 3, you don't know where to go, let me tell you. And it goes over here and it lays down a little strand, but not even DNA because it can't handle DNA. Uh, primase goes and it lays down a little chain of RNA. That's why we had to know what RNA is. Primase leaves a little bit of RNA right there. It's almost like a, a layer of paint that you, uh, it's called the primer. When you're painting your wall, you lay down the primer first and then you lay down the final coat of paint. So here, uh, Primase has come and it's laid down a little path of RNA here. Now DNA polymerase 3 goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then comes over here and says, okay, I know what to do. I start from here and I'll build a strand all the way as far as I can go. And so it goes, goes ahead and it does that. So it goes, doo -doo 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 -doo, and it builds a little strand of DNA. Actually, it should go all the way to the end. I'm going to stretch that out a bit. Okay. And it's built this in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. We have some problems now. Because when this unzips further, now there'll be another gap over here. And we still have this RNA that can't be left there. we got to fix that. So after a while, let's pretend like we've gone into the future a little bit. And uh, this has continued and we've done this. It's moved on. So we're further down and it's, it's zipped up. Now what, what's going to happen is it says, okay, what do I do now? I've already gone to the end. Well, guess what? Another primase molecule comes over and lays down another piece of RNA to say, okay, you're lost again. Start from here, buddy. And the inhibitor says, oh, okay, thank you. goes and it builds. And then when it builds down, then it ends up building another uh, piece of DNA all the way down to here. But it cannot actually connect. So we've got a problem there. So, so far, DNA polymerase 3 has done its bit and it just keeps going like this, backing up, going like this, backing up, going like this. Um, two more things we have to fix. We got to get rid of the RNA and then we got to glue these things together. And guess what? We have two more enzymes here that will do that. And what happens next? DNA polymerase 1. Don't ask me why it's the, in this order. DNA polymerase 1. This is how scientists have named this. DNA polymerase 1 will go back through and actually go doo -doo 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 and actually replace that with proper DNA. There's thousands of these, if not hundreds of thousands of these molecules, by the way. DNA polymerase 1 also sees over here, we got to replace that. So it actually replaces that with some DNA. And then finally, we got to glue these pieces together. Ligase comes in and does that 
and then closes the little link, just forms a strong covalent bond between these pieces. Uh, ligase is like the glue, and you can see ligase in a lot of different bits and pieces everywhere. So ligase is going to glue that all together. That's basically it, and this is happening a lot. One final thing, I think it, I'll, I'll make a separate video, this is getting a little bit too long. One final thing to understand is that in a particular DNA molecule, this process doesn't happen from one end and go all the way to the other. It can start at many points. So DNA replication is initiated at many points. And then when it all gets duplicated and, and reaches another uh, point here, then the whole molecule, it just makes it a lot faster instead of having to start at one side of a chromosome and go all the way down the other side. You can start at many different points and it all works out together. So definitely go back Pause and try this question, okay? I mentioned Okazaki fragments. Um, I'll post a link to this animation online. It's very, very great. It's perfect for this level, and you can change a few things about that as well, too. Alrighty, post a question on Edmodo if you have one.